Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Police and suspects in Gregory Park attack engage in shootout. Members of the security forces were on Monday morning engaged in a combat with men linked to Saturday's attack in Walker's Avenue in Gregory Park, Portmore, St. Catherine. Monday's shootout occurred along a section of the dike road. This was disclosed by Superintendent Hopeton Nicholson, acting commander of the St. Catherine South Police. About four persons engaged the police in a shootout close to Dyke Road. It's an ongoing operation based on what we have put in this area since 48 hours and it's just unfortunate that they got away, but we are happy that our police officers are safe and the investigation continues, he stated. Superintendent Nicholson was among members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force as well as Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Member of Parliament for East Central St. Catherine, Alanda Terrellong, who toured sections of Gregory Park on Monday. The tour followed the attack by gunmen early Saturday morning, which left a taxi operator dead and several houses charged. The police have launched a major search for those behind the incident. More stringent oversight coming for airport stated Valls. Transport Minister Darrell Valls has given instructions that more stringent oversight be observed at Sansa International Airport to prevent a recurrence of last week incident which led to a temporary closure of the runway. The instructions were given at a meeting on Monday between Mr. Voss and stakeholders in the aviation and tourism industries. Mr. Voss also instructed that a report be requested from the contractors Logan Aviation and Infrastructure Limited. He said directives were given as well as for the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority and Airport Authority Jamaica to work with an independent team to undertake an operation safety audit and assessment of both Sangsa and Norman Manley International Airports by August 31. The team will be led by the chairman of the JCAA, Colonel Oscar Dartby. An airport management team from GAP will also deploy its own team to conduct an independent assessment of the incident at Sangsa International. Mr. Voss said GAP has given a commitment to address issues of compensation in relation to both airlines and passengers. Additionally, GAP will be sending a team to address the issues identified at Norman Manley International Airport. Reaching to the minister's statement, opposition spokesperson on transport Michael Phillips declared that he was not satisfied. Mr. Phillips contends that the statement is lacking critical information. He told reporters that there are questions which remain unanswered about the decision to close the runway at Sangster International. Collect your loved ones, social cases threatening hospital care in Western Jamaica. The Western Regional Health Authority, WRHA, is appealing to relatives caregivers to collect their family members who have been released from hospital care in the parishes of St. James, Trelawney, Hanover and Westmoreland. This as an overcrowding is reportedly severely impacting the public health response due to beds being taken up by these persons now classified as social cases. According to a release from WRHA, there are currently 100 social cases in four parishes of Western Region from a total bed capacity of 731 beds, accounting for nearly 14% of the total bed count. Of the 100 cases, 32 have been placed at the Falmouth Infirmary. Meanwhile, 68 beds remain occupied by social cases, limiting the authorities' ability to accommodate an increasing number of sick patients. Regional Director of the WRHA, St. Andrade Sinclair, indicated that as of Sunday, August 13, the Conroe Regional Hospital and the Savannah Mar Hospital are both at 100% capacity, with 67 beds taken up by patients who have been officially released. Residents of Western Jamaica who seek inpatient care in one of the four hospitals are being impacted by these social cases. This situation has led to persons sitting in chairs while waiting on beds. We empathize with those who wait. Social cases in hospitals have, however, become a societal problem, which we need to fix together. Persons need to take responsibility for their loved ones, Mr. Sinclair stated. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton has also confirmed that social cases continue to be a major issue preventing access to hospital beds for those who are in need of care. According to Tufton, the advice I have received on pursuing legal action against persons who abandon families in our hospitals seem to suggest some doubt. 
whether such a course of action would be possible. I am told that the assessment continues and I am anxiously awaiting a definitive position on this matter. In the meantime, I support through the appeal for family members to claim their relatives so that we can treat persons who genuinely need a bed. It's a crisis we deal with almost every day in many of our hospitals. Motorists want laws to tackle stray cattle causing deadly threat on roads. Motorists who face regular encounters with cows, especially at night on the roads, have been raising safety concerns and calling for the government to pass the necessary laws to curtail the threat of deadly crashes caused by cattle. Senior Attorney at Law Leonard Green, President of the Advocates Association of Jamaica, who did thorough research on the laws, said that the Jamaican 1851 Trespass Act, this is dedicated to Catholic trespass, imposes no duty on the owner to ensure public safety. Green sees the need, like many motorists, for immediate amendment to the Act to place civil and criminal liability on such owners. The Dogs Liability for Attacks Act was passed in 2020, providing for criminal and civil liability on an owner of a dog that attacks, injures, and or causes the death of a person. Green said such an amendment should be done speedily to the Trespass Act to protect citizens. The 2020 Act repealed the Dogs Liability for Injuries by Act of 1877, which had not been amended since its enactment. It had no provision for criminal sanctions or for the negligence of persons whose dogs attack or injured members of the public. Dr. Lucian Jones, Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council, announced last week that so far, six people had died this year on roadways in Jamaica in crashes involving stray animals. Five of the crashes involved cattle strain on the roadway, and one was caused by a dog suddenly running onto the roadway. One of the victims was 22-year-old police constable Tajay Ibanks, who was killed after the car he was driving crashed into a cattle along the Mango Hill Main Road in Westmoreland. 11-year-old Giovanni Smith of St. Mary lost his life on March 1 because of a cattle. He was a pillant on a motorcycle when the driver lost control when a cattle suddenly ran out from the passage into the roadway causing a collision. Jones has described the situation as madness and has called for the police, residents and local government ministry to find a way to locate the owners of these cattle. He emphasized that animals were supposed to be tagged and there was a prescribed manner in which they should be removed. The accidents have left citizens outraged that stray animals are causing so many accidents and deaths. Last year, my car got damaged when it collided with a car one night on a poorly lit road in Portland and I had to pay to fix my vehicle and I really think something should be done about the owners of these animals, complained Adrian Brown, a motorist. Another motorist, John Simmitt, recounted that he nearly lost his life in 2019 when his minibus collided with a castle in St. Elizabeth. I was driving and before I knew it, a car stepped right out into the road right in front of my bus. Luckily, I was able to step on the brake suddenly and minor damage was done to my bus. Simmitt said last week as he responded to reports that several persons lost their lives this year from accidents involving cattle. Simit said although he informed a policeman of what took place, he was shocked when the policeman told him that the police did not have the authority to charge the owner. The government must pass laws so that these cattle owners can be taken to court for their negligence and selfish act, Simit pleaded. Just last week Friday, a female motorist Janet Ebanks had a scare when she was driving from Maple Clarendon to Kingston. Just a few miles out of the town, a car jumped from the embankment into the road just about three feet from my car. I was so shocked when I looked across, I saw about 30 cows in a pasture which had a fence for about 4 feet high and I am very concerned why the fence is so low. There should be guidelines by the authorities as to how high the fence should be, certainly not 4 feet. When I thought I was at the end of the cow stress, as I drove further down the road I saw about 15 cows or more crossing the busy road all by themselves and motorists had to be stopping to let them cross because they were not going to across the road at the same spot or at the same time, she recounted. The authorities must do everything in their power to prevent motorists from being hurt or killed by the negligence of these cow owners, she stated. Speaking to reporters, the Rachel Minister of Justice said, There is merit in looking at legislation to penalize animal owners who fail to control and cure their animals, and where these animals show the negligence of their owners, cause damage, injury and death the owners should be reliable for compensation. Green, however, further explained 
that the role of animals stray into the highway or roadway has been given substantial consideration by the courts over several decades. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.